This week, a broad daylight shootout in Brooklyn. Plus, a savage slashing caught on camera. Sometimes there's some sketchy characters that come on board. And a botched robbery turns deadly. Right now, Fox 5's Crime in the City. Here are some of the crimes from across the five boroughs. We begin this week in Brooklyn at the scene of a tragic double stabbing outside a Park Slope deli. An unimaginable heartbreak for a family tonight after 19-year-old twin sisters were both stabbed in Park Slope early this morning. One of the sisters tonight has succumbed to her injuries. Fox 5's Kendall Green has more on the brutal attack. She's taking it real hard. You know, we never expect nothing like this to happen. What are you going to do? Alfonso Goodson is facing a level of grief he never imagined he'd feel after getting a sobering call Sunday about his granddaughter, 19-year-old Samaya Spain. He said, granddaddy, Samaya, Samaya got stabbed and she died. You know. What was your reaction? I couldn't believe it. My wife started crying and everything. Police got the call about a stabbing around 2.20 Sunday morning after someone stabbed Samaya and her twin sister right outside of the Natural Plus Bodega in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Mohammed Albar, who works at the store, watched the girls grow up. They're very nice girls. I know the family. They, it's, very nice. it's so sad to see them. one of them gone, you know, one of them, she passed away. A witness on scene says some guys were hanging out at the store, hitting on the group of girls who just walked in. One of the guys had complimented the uh, two girls that had walked in with their friends, and they, they um, said no. The groups started going back and forth, arguing before one of the men walked down the block angrily, according to witnesses. Minutes later, one of the men in his 20s, they say, came banging and kicking on the bodega doors with the girls still inside. Workers locked the door until he walked away again. When they unlocked the doors, that's when the attack happened. A guy in all black had stabbed one of the girls in her neck and the other in her arm and ran. Leaving the knife he used right there on scene. Officials expect Samaya's twin sister to be okay, while the workers who witnessed the brutal attack, too, have their scars. All right, come in, they went out. They look like in their faces, like so sad about it. The news reinforcing nearly every father's fear. I think every every father would think about something like this happening. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the worst call you could get. Like you know, something happened to your, your your daughter. Now, police have yet to make an arrest in the case. Anyone who may have seen anything or know anything about the suspect is asked to come forward. Staying in Brooklyn, police make an arrest after a chaotic and deadly shooting in East Flatbush. We're learning new information about that police-involved shooting in Brooklyn where the suspect was killed by police as he was chasing two other people. So here's where it gets complicated. The man the gunman was chasing has now been arrested. Let's get right to Good Day's Briella Tomasetti. She joins us live from that scene in East Flatbush with the latest. Briella, good morning. Yeah, Tashani and Dan, this is an interesting update, to say the least. That man, 20-year-old Jeremiah Adams, was arrested in connection with an entirely different case on charges, including attempted murder. Now, he hasn't been charged in relation to this shooting, considering police are still trying to piece together exactly what happened in the moments leading up to that deadly confrontation. An unexpected twist in the police-involved shooting that left a 20-year-old gunman dead after he opened fire at two people on a busy Brooklyn street. The NYPD has confirmed that one of the people he was shooting at, 19-year-old Jeremiah Adams, has been arrested for attempted murder, robbery, and criminal possession of a weapon in relation to an unrelated March 7th case in Brownsville. According to the New York Post, who has cited police sources... The gunman was chasing after Adams for mugging him moments earlier. Ring camera video shows the moment gunfire was exchanged between police and the shooter, sending people running and ducking for cover. Investigators say four uniformed officers were in an unmarked patrol car near the intersection of East 57th Street and Remsen Avenue just before 6 o'clock Monday evening when they were alerted to an active shooter situation. After canvassing the area for a few minutes, they rounded a corner and located the 20-year-old gunman who was running down the street and firing off shots at two people. Police allege that's when the four officers jumped out of their car and returned fire. The gunman was shot multiple times and rushed to Kings County Hospital, where he died from his injuries. His 9mm handgun was recovered from the scene. You know, someone walking by could get hit. 
You know what I mean? They had to do what they had to do. That was the point. East Flatbush resident Nathaniel Nirenberg's pickup truck was hit by stray bullets. 60-year-old mechanic Henry Massup was also injured during the crossfire. Massup's friend and colleague Ricky Thomas, who didn't want to show his face on camera, watched him get shot twice. So I was calling Henry to tell him, let's go see who this guy is. When I looked, I saw Henry start to stumble. So I grabbed him and rip off his shirt. Keep see, off, come on. See a gunshot wound through his side, then one in his arms. If I didn't walk away, I probably would have got shot. Now, it's still unclear who shot Massive. In other words, if the gunfire came from the active shooter or the responding officers. However, we did speak with neighbors who visited Massive in the hospital. They say that he is in incredibly good spirits, and right now he's just feeling very lucky to be alive. Moving to Queens, a man is slashed in the face aboard an LIRR train. The whole thing caught on camera. A wild scene captured on board the Long Island Railroad. That's right, a man slashed in the face by a suspect who tried to block him from getting on the train. Fox Eyes Arthur Chan talked to riders at Grand Central taking the same route today. The uncommon outbreak of violence on the LIRR was captured on cell phone video. A rider being slashed in the face on a train that left Grand Central at 322 in the afternoon, heading for Far Rockaway. Police say a 32-year-old man was blocking the doorway when a 27-year-old tried to get on board at Sutvin Boulevard. Words were exchanged, then the 32-year-old followed the victim, took out a box cutter and started slashing him. Riders were stunned to silence, most of them just trying to get away. A third man runs towards the assault and tries to break it up. Police arrive and arrest Beneth Ekwegbalu, a resident of Jamaica, Queens. Tonight, he's been charged with assault, menacing, criminal possession of a weapon and harassment. LARR riders on the same line today reacting to what happened. It's pretty surprising. You usually hear it about the subways, but LIRR is pretty safe most times. But yeah, sometimes there's some sketchy characters that come on board. I feel like that's something I would see like if you take like the two or three, like like the MTA. Well, I know this is the MTA, but like those other trains, but like I feel like on the alert, you don't see that type of stuff like at all. Last week, a violent encounter unfolded on an A train during rush hour in Brooklyn. <laughs> A man in dark clothing menaces a subway rider. The situation devolves with the same man pulling out a gun. The passenger he targets is able to wrestle the gun away from him and shoots his attacker. Whatever sparked the violence on the A train or the LIRR, Ahmed has some good advice for everyone. Just be courteous. You know, we're all, we're all going through the, you know, the hustle and bustle of New York. So, you know, understand that some people are having a bad day, some people are having a good day. So just be courteous to each other, that's all. If there is an upside to what happened here, it's how quickly the suspect was arrested. The NYPD tells us two off-duty NYPD officers happened to be on that train, and it was those two officers who made that arrest. A quick resolution in this case, while the more complicated one of ongoing violence in transit continues. Now we head to Manhattan, where a popular Israeli restaurant on the Upper West Side is targeted by vandals. Police on the Upper West Side are investigating after a popular Israeli restaurant is tagged with graffiti. That's right. You can see here red paint splashed all over the building and the words form line here to support genocide were written on the sidewalk in front of it. Fox Eyes Chris Welch talked to the owner about what happened. It's just scary and it's rude, you know, it's like, I don't know, I, I, I have no words. I, I cannot find the right word. I'm just terrified. When Ben Zara showed up for her shift at Effie's Cafe Sunday morning, the paint and graffiti was still wet. She knew it had just happened. Red blood paints, like sprinkled all of here, dripping, and the black sign about genocide and the free Gaza sign over here. But 24 hours later, thanks to support from a community armed with power washers, it is essentially gone. And that community showed up once again, hours later, filling the tiny West 96th Street Cafe. How hard was it to get a table today? <laughs> it was, uh, it took a while, but it was well worth the wait. I want to show that when these horrible things happen, we're just going to unify and we're, it's just going to embolden us to do more and to support more. They never go out for lunch, but you know, when we see senseless vandalism to Jewish establishments, it gives all the motivation to go and support. What makes New York the best place in the world is out of many, one. If I don't come here in solidarity with my Jewish neighbor, then I am not only a coward, 
but I'll put myself in a vulnerable situation. We have to all oppose anti-Semitism as we have to oppose racism of any type. Congressman Jerry Nadler, the most senior Jewish member of the House, had a message for those who did this. We will oppose you and you should be more intelligent. Um, people should be judged individually and not as members of, of groups and uh, you, you've got a lot to learn. Now, as to the search for those responsible, the NYPD tells us they have notified the hate crimes task force, but the investigation remains ongoing. Back in Queens, police are on the hunt for the phony delivery driver linked to at least nine break-ins across the borough. Well, one of the victims is a 35-year-old single mother. She is devastated by this. She says the suspect stole $9,000 from her, and now she is behind on her rent as well as other bills. It's been a nightmare, honestly. 35-year-old Estella Eilis says the burglar broke into her apartment in Sunnyside, Queens through a bathroom window and rummaged through her drawers and closets. He took almost like $9,000, I mean $9,000 cash. It was her savings. She says she withdrew from the bank to deposit into another bank. Money, she says, took years to save from her job at Trader Joe's. Money she desperately needed for her 12-year-old daughter. Man, I just he just messed up my life, you know. He, I, I work very hard every day. The NYPD says the suspect has been disguising himself as an Amazon worker, wearing an Amazon delivery vest and breaking into apartment windows in Sunnyside, Astoria, and Long Island City, Queens, stealing more than $32,000 in cash, jewelry, and other property. The serial burglar started hitting apartments a year ago in January and has struck at least nine times. The most recent was March 5th. He took my jewelry, he took like speakers, headphones, my Apple Watch. The NYPD is asking for the public's help in identifying the suspect. They want to get this guy off the streets before he hurts another person like Estella. It's been very hard for me, like now I, I'm back up on my rent. I hope he enjoy all the money that he took from me. And finally, just outside the city, a robbery takes a turn for the worse in Mount Vernon, leaving two people dead. Well, new developments tonight in the deadly shooting outside of a warehouse in Mount Vernon. All right, five men have now been charged with murder and the robbery gone wrong while authorities continue to look for more suspects. Fox 5's Richard Giacobis live outside the federal courthouse in White Plains with the latest tonight. Richard. Steve, Natasha, it was a 36-hour manhunt that ended in the Bronx today following that robbery at a Mount Vernon warehouse, a deadly robbery. Five men brought here to the federal courthouse in White Plains after they attempted to rob a warehouse, a robbery again that went horribly wrong. FBI agents have been on their trail since early Tuesday morning. Authorities say it was outside this warehouse on South Fifth Avenue in Mount Vernon at around 10 o'clock Monday night. Two customers pull up, placing an order for a bunch of vapes and hookahs. According to the criminal complaint, the warehouse sells unlicensed marijuana and nicotine products. Officials say it took workers at the warehouse two hours to prepare this order. Then at around midnight, warehouse employees say once the order was ready, they bring it outside. That's when more than a dozen people exit a nearby van and pull out guns. These images released from surveillance video by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Words are exchanged, according to the complaint, before a gunfight between the warehouse employees and the suspects break out. One of the robbers and a worker were killed in the shootout. After an extensive search that involved FBI agents, the NYPD, and members of the Mount Vernon Police Department, investigators located surveillance video that tracked the van to a Bronx apartment in the Belmont section. They were able to arrest five men from these surveillance photos captured in that apartment. Joseph Perez, Joan Diaz Felice, Iario Contreras, Herpe Diaz Felice, and Victor Jimenez all charged with multiple counts, including murder and robbery. According to the criminal complaint, on the charge of murder in a drug trafficking crime, all five men could face the death penalty or life in prison. Now, we're going to show you a picture of that U.S. Attorney's Office put out. They're still searching for other suspects in this case. This is the alleged gunman known as Marcos. This is his photo. If you know him or anything about this case, you're asked to call the FBI at 212-384-1000. And that's this week's Crime in the City. Subscribe for more at youtube.com slash fox5ny.